Hello everybody, welcome to the October blog on the Agricology website. Um, just a good opportunity day today to have a look at this grassland subsoiling. It's October the 24th and it's actually very dry for the time of year. What we're doing here is just running a uh, seven-legged tine through this grass, acting as a subsoil. So it's actually down there about 14 inches deep, lifting up the, uh, the soil and then it's compressing it back down again. Uh, and what we're actually getting is the opportunity to not only create better drainage in this heavy land, but to let some air down into the soil, because of course in an organic situation, the more organic matter and the more life we can get going down in the subsoil, the better for us. This land that we're standing on here is actually really productive in the summer, holds on to a bit of moisture, produces a lot of grass, but in the winter I know that I can't graze livestock on this particular area because it's so wet and so heavy. So to get an opportunity at this time of the year to subsoil this land, help with that drainage and at the same time help with the conditioning of the soil, help with earthworm movement, get some organic matter going in there, this is a great operation. And although you're not getting instant results now or tomorrow, next year hopefully you'll see the improvement uh, in the growth and production of the soil in this field. So here we are in the field next door to the one we've just been in with the grassland subsoiler. This field has literally just been drilled up last week. This has gone into winter oats. This has gone in following a three year red clover lay. So I'm hoping that there's lots of fertility that's been left behind behind the clover. We've drilled it with oats. Easiest two crops to grow organically, oats and triticale. An oat will get up, it'll get off, and it'll get away, it's a tall, plant and it's a dense grown plant so it actually blacks out the topsoil and suppresses weeds very naturally. Now the big point here to make is that we only drilled this last week so around mid-October you know the ultimate for me is the 20th of October more conventional, more intensive farmers would have all their drilling done finished um, hopefully by early to mid-September. In an organic situation if you drill later in October what happens is, is your corn actually gets away, but your weeds are starting to go to sleep. So hopefully your corn comes away and it'll be very visible within a few days, but the weeds will stay dormant. And then in the spring, it's got a real chance. Your crop has got a real chance to get up and get away and beat those weeds and put them into darkness. And I find it works really, really well. So for me, the later you can drill uh, a winter cereal, the better. If you drill earlier in September, your weeds have a chance to establish themselves, do their thing, they're taking nutrient from your cereal, and of course in the spring then they have that same chance to get away and beat your crop. So uh, I think it's a very good tip, drill slightly later if you can. And then just to finish up for the October blog, um, we've had quite a lot of interesting people asking me about my working dogs and how you go about training them. I've kept dogs for many, many years and I like to compete with them in trials at weekends. But it's not rocket science training a dog to do a simple task on a farm and a good working dog is worth his weight in gold. And I would much rather use a dog uh, to work my stock than to chase them around on a motorbike. Um, I think people are daunted at the thought of training their own dog but it really is pretty simple so over the next few months I'm going to give a little bit of tuition on here if you like about how I break my dogs in and how I train them um, and as I say a good working collie as long as he's got the instinct to work um, you can get him to do something you want a dog that works your sheep for you doesn't worry them stops when you tells him to and gets every sheep in the field not just the first half a dozen he comes across so um, Hopefully I'll be able to put it across in a way that you can follow and have a bit of fun training your dog. Um, and as I say, a nice working dog is worth his weight in gold. So uh, the basics of training a dog, I'm hoping to sort of do some little blogs over the next few months and hopefully you'll find it interesting. Thanks very much.